Hi, I'm Lise Colucci, one of Queen Being's Life Coaches. On this program, I talk to survivors about topics of narcissistic abuse and answer any questions. Today's topic is narcissism in the polyamory community. Hit subscribe and let's go. Well, my question might be a complicated and controversial one, but my particular narcissist was, um, I believe, also as a result of meeting several different partners, was also, also became a sex addict throughout this process, throughout this um, this time together. Um, the one thing that I was probably the most uncomfortable with is um, that it seemed that my narcissist was constantly trying to get me to agree to open relationships, to make the make us seem like, I don't know if we were more hip because we would be these powerful people who, you know, had other lovers and it made us seem more, give us more value as a couple, but I just didn't understand. I kind of feel like love is love and, and human emotion and humans have a lot of things going on. So my question, I guess, is, are there a lot of narcissists that participate in polyamorous relationships as a way to make sure that they have a supply of people to use and to extort for their pleasure, be it whatever, but it gives them a reason to, I don't know, it gives them a sense of honesty in the whole mess of it, I guess. I believe also that people can have polyamorous relationships where there is a lot of trust, there is a lot of openness. I also think it's a, it's a concept that has to be explored as people are aging. And if you're in a long-term relationship with somebody, you know, how that, how that develops and how you know, maybe you've been in a relationship for 24 years and you're kind of like, oh, I'm not going to abandon this and I'm going to do these things. And I think that polyamory has a huge place in the development of the human mind and the expansion of love and empathy for other people. However, I feel that it's also a very precarious place for people to be because if it's just another avenue for abuse and we're using it, or if the community isn't aware of narcissistic abuse, as many people are not, I feel like it could be really, really damaging to see that individual persons participate in such relationships. And I guess that's more why I wanted to open the dialogue because I'm not sure that I am incapable of having a relationship with I don't even know if I'm a jealous person. I don't even know if I am, I haven't had a free occasion in any of my relationships because of the open and queer centered groups that I operate in. I haven't had a partner who isn't a sneak, as you said. I haven't had a partner who is honest about um, their sexuality. My understanding of polyamorous relationships and open relationships is that they require an awful lot of communication and honesty between the couple who is who are expanding their relationship out to other people in the world. Um, and that then it extends that openness and the honesty, the communication with people that they bring into their lives, be it individually or as a group. Um, and that that is something a narcissist won't do. You're right in assuming that it is a place for them to cheat without it actually being cheating because it's been agreed upon. And that if you're being coerced in any way into this lifestyle, in other words, if you are trauma bonded and you are un making a decision based on that trauma bond so that you don't lose this person, that that is a manipulative tactic to get you to agree to something that they want rather than your choice through your own desires, your own wishes, your own beliefs. Um, I think it's a 
complex lifestyle and it's it's definitely not one that should be taken on without a lot of thought and consideration and within a safe community. It's a ripe place for triangulation to take place, for jealousies to take place, and I'm talking about from the narcissist from the narcissist perspective or from their ability to manipulate within a community like that. There is there are so many things that could go wrong. There's triangulation I mean, just bringing in other people into your intimate life. They can then use that other person against you. They can use you against the other person. They can make comparisons. They can throw things in your face. If you, um, if you are also in relationships with other people, they can try and get involved within that and triangulate themselves into that and create problems. There it's a place where supply is multiplied. You can glean supply from multiple sources that way. So as far as narcissists and the polyamorous community, I would say that narcissists are all over the place. They're in every community. The opportunity for a narcissist to be within any community is there. And so understanding, learning about the signs of narcissism, what to look for, how to avoid it, how to... Know if you're with one, how to get out, looking for signs like gaslighting, manipulation, half-truths, double standards, any form of domestic violence. Triangulation when it comes to pitting one person against another, to giving one truth to one person and a half-truth to another. I've spoken to people within the polyamorous community, and one thing that is a theme is transparency that people tend to be more transparent and more open with what's going on within the relationships, what's going on within secondary relationships, what's going on with, with other partners. That open dialogue gives a bit more protection or, and a bit that transparent communication can set a narcissist up to be caught. If somebody tells a half truth, for instance, they're having trouble telling their partner that they would like to have sex with somebody else, with their new, their new partner. They may just be fumbling, and they may be uncomfortable, and it may be a mistake that they don't tell the person beforehand, and that can cause a problem, but that's not a narcissist. A narcissist may do this over and over again, and they do it deliberately. So they may tell a half truth. Oh, we're just friends. We're just going out. We're going to hang out tonight. When really they have full intentions of much, much more. And they never do disclose the truth or they disclose the truth later in an argument or they, they use gaslighting to make you feel like they did tell you and you just didn't hear it. There's all kinds of ways they can manipulate within that. But the truth does come out. And when you start seeing these behaviors over and over again, multiple times, you realize it's not just somebody fumbling and struggling with a, with a more complex set of rules within relation. It's also really important to know the signs of narcissism. And there's plenty of videos out there that can tell you these signs, but things like gaslighting, lying, manipulating, cheating. And yes, you can cheat within a polyamorous relationship. Um, double standards, projecting, love bomb and devalue not accepting blame for anything they've done, shifting blame onto you. Generally, if you're feeling uncomfortable and unhappy in your relationship and you're with someone who is making you feel like things are your fault or you're, and they're lowering your self-esteem, they're lowering your, your view of yourself. If you're miserable all the time, you're probably with someone toxic. And if that person is a narcissist, they do not have empathy. They do not possess the ability to change. That can happen within any community. And so understanding those signs is important. And another risk of a narcissist within a polyamorous community is the potential to bring a toxic person into a dynamic where more than just yourself is involved. So really watching for these signs and really knowing who it is that you're, that you're with. I would say it's the same as for a monogamous relationship when it's new. Get have, take time to get to know someone understand where they're coming from, understand where they've been, understand who they are. And the more you do this, the, the more protected you'll be from encountering a narcissist for very long.
one really important thing is to understand that when you do find yourself with a narcissist, that you need to walk away. That walking away is your protection. That you can't fully insulate yourself from narcissists in the world, but you can raise your standards for how you'll be treated and you can lower your tolerance for the abuse. And through that, you can walk away. One thing suggested to me by people within the polyamorous community was that community was very important to them. They felt that having somewhere to go to check things, to, to see if what you're feeling is normal to feel within a polyamorous relationship, or is it something, is it something else? Is something going on? So having a community that is honest and open and can, you can bounce ideas off of and get feedback can be very helpful. There are online communities and, and local communities that you can find in your area for this sort of resource. So what are some examples of how a narcissist might manipulate within a polyamorous relationship? One that I have heard is the narcissist and their partner will form an understanding that this is an open relationship. The narcissist will, of course, have multiple relationships and be seeking supply from outside the relationship on a regular basis. The other person may or may not choose to have other partners at that time, but when they do choose to have one, the narcissist will behave in a jealous way. They will do things like criticize, cut down, as if this isn't something allowed in the relationship. Another thing they might, might do is instead of having open communication and transparency with all parties involved, the narcissist will withhold certain bits of information from usually their primary sources of supply. And, or they might do it with anyone within the situation, but they will withhold this information. And then when they are caught withholding the information, and it's usually important information, they will gaslight and they will turn the table and start pushing blame back onto the person who is the victim. So it's really no different than the way they behave in monogamous relationships, except for that the consent is there, the consent to be in an open relationship. So that brings me to talking about consent and that if a person comes into a relationship and is not polyamorous to begin with, and within the relationship with the narcissist, they agree to a polyamorous relationship or an open relationship of any kind, that person may not necessarily be operating out of a free will. They're in a trauma bonded situation and they're being manipulated and very slowly and methodically groomed to accept the situation that is the way the narcissist wishes it to be. It's, very, it's impossible to have true consent when there's manipulation happening. Remember, as with all narcissistic abuse, it is not your fault. This, didn't, this isn't something you agreed to even if you consensually went into the situation. You did not agree to the abuse, you did not agree to the manipulation, and you did not agree to the tactics the narcissist used to influence your life and hurt you. It's important to find healing and it's important to take your time to learn about narcissism, to learn the signs, to understand the signs, and to be able to walk away if you meet one in the future. Thank you for watching. Again, my name is Lise Colucci. For information about me, about coaching, about group coaching, or to be a guest survivor on the program, See the links below. Don't forget to subscribe. Thank you.